I've had this piece of elm bow sitting around for a while now and I've been looking at it, wondering what to do with it. I've decided I'm going to make this into a side table. It's a bit punky and it's got some voids. So uh, I'm going to try and fix it up, give it a bit more strength with uh, some resin, clear resin. Although it, funny enough, looks black later. I'm not going to be using metal legs either. I hate them. I thought I'd give the uh, scrub plane a go to clean this up, but um, it shatters it more. So a normal hand plane, like a jack plane with a flat blade will work perfectly fine on resin. I was trying to avoid having to do this, basically. I hate surfacing with a router. And again, this is another one of those jobs. I'm not a big fan of the mess it makes. You uh, really should be doing this outside, but I'm sweating like a corner virgin inside. I mean, it's 30 degrees outside, so I don't, you know, left it to do it in the workshop. I'm sorry you haven't seen much of me on YouTube of late. I've been suffering badly with migraines. It seems every time I sit in front of a computer screen, I get a migraine. So this is taking forever. This gear from 3M, it's a marine, imperial marine compound, and it's supposed to get rid of 800 grit scratches, which is pretty epic for a compound. I am pre-finishing this uh, for one reason only, really. I've flattened that. Um, and I'm really not, I don't have a design in mind, so I just want to seal it off and hopefully it's not going to move between then and when I come up with an idea for the base. To be honest with you, I would have been quite happy with just putting a picture frame around that and sticking it on the wall. Thing of beauty. The thing is with using resin, you keep having to top up by pouring more resin to fill up your holes. This occasion I just used um, Starbond to fill up before it's to get a nice smooth top. I made this bench some time ago and as you can see it wasn't the best of designs so it's a bit of a wobble so I thought I should really recycle that. Some I don't know what I'll do with the seating area a bit because I have carved in two coopered seats to that but um, I'm going to use these for legs. Before we go any further I want to say a big thank you to my super fans. Derek Hansen, Justin Walsh, Peter Davidoff, Mark Dana, and Jimmy Frick. Thanks, man. I'm going to have some nice crumpets later. I couldn't remember what finish I'd put on those legs, but sandpaper soon told me. Oh, thinness, man. That smell takes me back. There's some fragrances I can remember as a child. Well, a child. I say a teenager behind the bike shed. I used to enjoy but it reminds me of Magic Marcus too. It takes me right back to when I was a kid and my dad would be repairing something in wood and he'd always pull out that two-pack. Oh, God, I love that stuff. I said to my brother the other day, oh, two-pack filler, I love that stuff and went, oh my god yes yeah, so do i this rotex i'm not speeding this clip up at whatsoever and underneath that sander is a 180 grit disc i don't even think it's a new disc look how quickly that's removing what's in front of you i oh, love this sander i mean it ain't a finished sander don't get me wrong someone actually recently asked me what would you buy would you buy if you could only buy one sander would you, would you buy this because it's technically two sanders in one. It is not a finished sander. The stroke on this sander is a five mil, just like the uh, sander I reviewed recently. I just really dislike. A finished sander needs to be three mil. I think these table saw sleds are an American idea. I'm not sure, but I've used quarter sawn runners for, for the runners and I've used plastic. I haven't used this sled since winter and now I've come to the table. Can't get it in the slot. I'd had enough of all of that. change of mind I'm going to use the uh, track saw to cut these legs to length I couldn't see it being very safe like this on the sled you're probably going to be wondering why 
I didn't cut leg to length with the track saw. The problem is with that track saw, it tilts only one way and the angle of that was completely the opposite way. So I just used the track saw to move as much waste as I could before I had to go to the hand plane. I like my beans covered in oil. It's better than candle wax, I think. quick tip when planing end grain is you're going to smash the grain out the other end when you exit if you just chamfer the edge that will help but before we use any power tools let's talk about shop safety be sure to read understand and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools knowing how to use your power tools As I'm recycling these legs, I don't have any film or footage apart from pictures to show you how I made these legs. I used the track saw to give me my depth gauge, as I suppose you'd call it, to then hand plane down to. I did try my best to smash as much of that waste out, but um, that made it a lot more difficult with a hand plane because the hand plane's just skimming off the top of those pointed bits. It did take forever, I can assure you. Incidentally, this side table will be on my Facebook page under the same name, Hugh and Orr. If you'd like to purchase it, send me a message and uh, we'll work something out. I'll put a uh, link to my Facebook page down below. The top of this table is about 400 by 550, I think. So these legs to visually for me were a little bit too big, so I thought I'd try and cut them down and make them into an interesting shape. Our survey said... <coughs> but in the end, I thought this was a better idea. Well, I obviously wasn't very awake that day, as you can see. No, those mortises don't line up because I've sawn the wrong sides off. Anyway, I fill them with dominoes, glued, and re drilled the mortises. Do you ever start something and then think to yourself, why am I doing this the hardest way? The way that's going to take the longest. And I realise it's about 35 degrees outside and I don't really fancy doing it this way. Given how I'm going to piece this together, there's two legs and there's a top, so we've got three pieces. Perfect. So that looks great on the eye. Always, if you can do anything, do it in odd numbers. It visually just looks so much better. But because I've got a 45 degree angle on the front of that piece of burr, it just made sense to me that I needed to put some sort of shape onto the front of these legs to excuse, concur with the point of the top. And that's why I did it. I'm not sure I would have made sense there, but if you think of an arrow or the front of a plane, it all comes to a point, doesn't it? So air can flow over it. Well, that's what I've done with the legs. Because also the point is just above those legs is, is a point, you know what I mean? This trick I learned from working on my car, doing the body work. 
basically that spray paint you can use any spray paint you like doesn't affect the word it's basically called a guide coat and then you use a flat block like I'm using that's not soft or anything so it's not spongy and then they call it blocking and block your surface with long strokes now what will happen is your block will be surfing off the top of your high points and where there's paint still that is your, that's showing you that's your low point so you know you haven't got a nice smooth straight cut as it were as you can see there you can see those three high points in between there and there that I need to work block down to to get it all nice and smooth and it's the fun part of making a mirror image of one you've made now this isn't as bad as you think it's going to be and there's a good reason why I'm going to do this No, I did not do this all in one pass. I did it for three or four mil passes to look up my depth for 20 mil. I highly recommend you stick in a corner chisel on your shopping list if you don't already have one. I've got a little itch. Down there. is going well when I was clamping the legs together I was using those red clamps you've seen me review and they've got some epic amount of power on them they're probably the strongest clamps I've got and dickhead here completely forgot I really forced it on so left me with this dent and this trick usually works quite well I was actually quite surprised because that was quite deep just hit it with a sander and you're good this took me a while to work out how the hell I was going to Router in the mortise to that end grain, those legs. That bit in the router was so blunt, I was really worried it was going to go flying off somewhere. But it all went well. Although I did have to give the uh, tenon on the male piece a little tickle. And there's a good reason for having an overhang on your bench. Now I should confess, I have, before I glued these legs together, I did pre-finish them, so they've had one coat of finish over that stain. Now the reason I've stained the inside of those, because if you remember there was the, the tenons mortises um, showing from the previous bench. Well I needed to really hide those didn't I? And that's why why I stained it black. I mean and I quite like it too. I think you know I like the the contrast. Just in the nick of time I remember I needed to sign this. I wish I bought a an electric one not have to heat it up with a blowtorch. I'm using a hard wax oil um, Osmo Poly X in this case, which is pretty much my go-to finish. Um, it's a matte finish. So um, no, it's not going to look wet when it's finished. I don't particularly like that wet look. It makes wood look too fake, but I do actually like shiny stuff. So it's bizarre. I am kind of regretting using the Osmo Poly X on the legs though. I think I would have rather used a hard wax oil that has a white pigment in it to make those legs look a little bit whiter. The legs as, as they are with the poly X went a bit too yellow for my liking. Cess Levy. So slip your pants off and let's take a listen to the final product. jib please like and subscribe share if you're really feeling kinky and uh, we'll see each other again be lucky